Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in the playlist of electromagnetics and antennas. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about Brewster angles in context with electromagnetic waves. So let's get straight into it. By the definition of Brewster angle, it's an angle of the incident wave for which there is no reflection. In order to understand this properly, we need to have a background of what reflection coefficient is and what transmission coefficient is. Now, for example, if some wave is incident and it goes from one medium to the other, we know that some part of the wave will come back and some part of it will be transmitted. So if this is the transmitted wave, this is the incident wave, this will be the reflected portion of the wave. And the ratio of ER upon EI is known as reflection coefficient, which is very, very important parameter. And it is also used in transmission lines and in the calculation of standing wave ratio ratios and so on and so forth. And furthermore, reflection coefficient can also be understood in context with a wave which is incident at some angle. Now that angle is measured with normal. So some part of the wave will be reflected back and some of it will be transmitted and it will make an angle theta too. So if this transmitted wave uh, deviates its angle that is known as refraction and this part is known as reflection. Now Brewster angle is the angle of the incident wave for which there is no reflection. So we want to do away with this part. So what will be the angle at which we should send our incident wave so that there is no reflection. This is what the definition of Brewster angle is. So a little bit of background here. When a wave is incident on the interface of two media, depending upon the type of the interface, there is either only reflection when, uh, when the wave is incident on a perfect conductor. This is what happens. And either we could have both reflection or refraction. And we want to eliminate reflection from our scenario so that we can find out Brewster angle for a particular incident wave. So our objective will be to find the condition when there is no reflection at all. And we'll find those conditions for two different cases. One will be for the horizontal polarization and other one will be for vertical polarization. So for the two cases for parallel polarization, we should know the reflection coefficient. This is a prerequisite. We should know the uh, value of ER upon EI or the reflection coefficient. And we should also know the reflection coefficient for perpendicular polarization. These are incorrectly drawn under the headings. Please uh, correct that while noting it down. So this is parallel polarization. This is perpendicular polarization. You can simply judge it from the orientation of incident wave. And we know that uh, theta 1 is the angle of incidence and theta 2 is the refraction angle. So we want uh, reflected wave to go away. So the starting point of calculating the Brewster angle will be the knowledge of the reflection coefficients for both the cases. So for parallel polarization, the reflection coefficient is eta 2 cos theta 1 minus eta 1 cos theta 2 upon eta 2 cos theta 1 plus eta 1 cos theta 2. And for perpendicular polarization, it is eta 2 cos theta 1 minus eta 1 cos theta 2 divided by eta 2 cos theta 1 plus eta 1 cos theta 2. Where of course eta is uh, mu upon 
epsilon so this is the value dependent upon the permeability and permittivity of the material so if this is medium 1 so the wave is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2 mu 1 and mu epsilon 1 are going to be the parameters for medium 1 and mu 2 and epsilon 2 will be the parameters for medium 2 now for the sake of simplicity we take mu r for both the mediums to be 1 so that gives me mu of both the mediums to be equivalent to mu naught of course epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 will be different for both the mediums now if you look at the definition of reflection coefficient it is the ratio of er upon ei and we do not want er to be present because Brewster angle is the angle of incident for which there is no reflection so if er becomes zero that will be the condition for Brewster angle so this is what we start with we put er to be equivalent to zero and putting er is equivalent to zero means making the numerator zero and the numerator has eta 2 cos theta 2 minus eta 1 cos theta 1 so that gives me eta 2 cos theta 2 equal to eta 1 cos theta 1 now I can write cos theta 2 as 1 minus sine square theta 2 under root and from Snell's law theta 2 upon theta 1 is eta 1 upon eta 2 under root now why I am now why am I doing this because I would want to express theta 2 in terms of theta 1 I want only theta 1 in this expression because if you looked at the definition of Brewster angle we simply want to calculate that value of incident angle for which there is no reflection so we'll do away with theta 2 we'll keep theta 1 in the expression only so sine theta 2 becomes equivalent to eta 1 upon eta 2 under root sine theta 1 so this was the tricky part rest everything is pretty simple so I'll substitute this value of sine theta 2 in this star equation so here the value of sine theta 2 is put up and you could pause the video and note down these steps so at this step we substitute eta 1 as mu naught upon epsilon 1 and eta 2 as mu naught upon epsilon 2 under root that will eliminate mu's from the equation and will be left with epsilons in the final equation so sine square theta 1 becomes epsilon 2 upon epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and cos square theta 1 becomes epsilon 1 upon epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and a more expressive way of writing this is in the form of tan theta 1 which becomes under root of epsilon 2 upon epsilon 1 so this is the condition of theta 1 for which we'll get no reflection and this is known as Brister angle but please understand this is only valid for the case of parallel polarization now let's take up the example for perpendicular polarization all the steps remain the same for perpendicular polarization we should know the refractive we should know the reflection coefficient and the numerator of reflection coefficient is er that needs to be put equivalent to zero when numerator is zero eta 2 cos theta 1 becomes equivalent to eta 1 cos theta 2 now solving using the same steps substituting the Snell's law and all uh, we'll get the value of sine square theta 1 to be equivalent to epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 upon epsilon 1 minus epsilon 1 so we'll get a, a zero in the denominator so no such angle for perpendicular polarization exists so Brewster angle for perpendicular polarization is non-existent that is a very very important point and the Brewster angle for parallel polarization is equivalent to uh, tan theta 1 
which is given by epsilon 2 upon epsilon 1 under root and I hope this quick tutorial on Brewster angle in electromagnetic waves was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel as well I'll see you around in the next video take care have a good day and a good life ahead bye <clears throat>